water's coming out of the uh, penis right now. <laughs> Only in Bhutan. What is this like spinning thing? So even in Bhutan, all people help out of all ages. Kuzuzampala Ama. See, the mill is rotating. That is from just from the power of the water. Oh gosh, careful no, darling. No, I'm just pausing for the camera. Oh, <laughs> yeah. little prankster. Wow. It's heaven, guys. It's heaven, yeah. Oh. Okay, so we've just came into the bee factory. and G'day and good morning guys from the beautiful country of Bhutan. Today we are in Bontang and we are checking out some of the main sites here. Uh, first on the list today is one of the temples here that was the first temple that was built in the 17th century, century. and this temple is so so special this area. This is where the Guru Rinpoche also known as the second Buddha sat and meditated in a uh, on top of a rock and he he meditated there for so long that there's an imprint in the rock uh, from him city. Okay, so we're just going up now. So unfortunately, I don't know if we can film, but we're going to try and see. So let's see. Hopefully so. we can. Okay, so we just left the uh, the temple then. Unfortunately, we couldn't film inside, uh, but I'll show you a photo here of what the um, cave imprint looked like when Guru Rinpoche uh, sat there. Unfortunately, we also can't film in the other temples as well. That's why we've skipped that part. So we're gonna skip that part, but I just wanna show you, we're just out the front of the temple here. This is a natural drain using rock. And you can see here, this is, where the water goes and if it gets flooded the water goes down there. Uh -huh, so cool. yeah. First little random stop of today. Mm. How they build houses in Bhutan. I'm really interested to know. Same. Yeah. Because all of the houses look the same and I feel like they have to follow a design code. One thing I really love about Bhutan is they're very sustainable. So they still manage to keep 70% of their land covered in natural forest, mm. but yet every year they cut down a certain number of trees and every year right. they grow a certain number of trees. Yeah. The the balance. So we can see here, this is the start of a frame of a house and all of this is pine from pine trees just like this and this is all being milled by these guys over here and this is how they construct and how they build. Now over here, we'll see a house that's more completed and we'll go over there in a second. But yeah, it's super- Very beautiful, right? Very, very beautiful. Yeah. All natural, raw materials. Mm. Everything's eco-friendly, yeah. right? And then here they have the different stones. So it looks like some type of sandstone here, then uh, rocks from the riverbed, and then also more wood here, which is looks to be drying in the sun. Just like this as well, this looks like that this has been freshly milled. You can see the sawdust on the bottom. So they must have had the milling machine before. You can see that this hasn't been treated yet with any lacquer or anything. And this is just drying out because what happens is when you first cut timber, it's extremely fresh. So it needs to be dried out for a little bit before you can use mm. it for construction because it has so much moisture in it. Right. So yeah, super fascinating. So you know much about it. I do, yeah. I used to work with timber quite a lot. No. Um, all of this here is just to build the one house. Mm. And then when they finish, they'll move on to the next place. Right. Um, so let's go and look at this one house now and see uh, see what we can find. So I believe uh, labor in, in Bhutan uh, is done by actually three, three different people from three different countries. You have the Bhutanese, you have Nepali Bhutanese people, you also have Indian construction workers mm. as well, which what we learned last time. So you can see here that they're using the uh, stone and the wood as well, the same wood that the workers were just working on for the uh, window frames and the door frames. And then all of that wood that was laid out there will be used for the uh, 
construction of the uh, roof and the walls as well. So yeah, super, super fascinating. So you can see here, this is the round stone and this might be from, you know, the river rocks or something like that. And then you can see here that this was once rounded, but now it's being turned into a brick. And you can see how beautiful finish that is. So they turn it into a brick and then it gets put and with cement gets put into here. So how amazing is that? All raw materials, literally from the river, from the trees. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Turing, would you say that uh, even though the materials are uh, easily accessible mm -hmm. from Bhutan, is it still expensive to build a house? Actually, like it depends upon the what kind of house we are building. Uh -huh. If it's only for the family house and all, it's not really that expensive. But yeah. then, like uh, if you're building for like uh, commercial buildings for about the renting the apartments and yeah. all, for them, yes, I would say that more since they're bigger, building the bigger ones, it's more expensive. So yeah, it's really interesting to see that how different it's done here in Bhutan, but uh, because in Nepal, it's like you can build anything, like any kind of architecture or any kind of design but here it has to be a specific design and in future i would want to build something like this which is uh, more eco-friendly and natural like this non-toxic i'd say because i think like bhutan they don't really use paint mm. it's all like natural and wood yeah that's true yeah, that's a so, good observation yeah. yeah like when we normally build house in nepal or anywhere around the world yeah like we shouldn't be staying there for at least one month because of the strong smell, right? Yeah. But something like this and something like rammed earth. Yeah, and natural. Yeah, natural yeah. is really good. Yeah, that's true. Mm. And I think natural always lasts for longer. You see, you see like buildings, like old buildings, right? Really old buildings. And what are they made of? Natural material. Mm. So it's like, it's interesting. I really do think that natural material lasts longer because you really see it. Concrete cracks. Right, you know? that's true. Yeah. So even in Bhutan, all people help out of all ages. Kuzuzampala Ama. And uh, we've even got Ama here. She's doing, preparing some firewood or something like that. So even, even Ama is doing her part as well, which is awesome. She I want to be her, like her. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, what when I grow old. Goals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. She's doing so well. Oh. She's uh, asking that if you can uh, come to and visit her house and have a tea. Oh, wow. Wow, <laughs> wow that's very kind. Her home is quite far. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe next time. Maybe next but time. Very kind of her yeah. to invite us. Yeah, thank you, Ama, for... Uh, uh, inviting us for tea that's really <laughs> lovely yeah, very generous <laughs> yeah wow see such lovely people and this is what i love about this vlog today mm. we're stopping in random places unplanned talking to the people of bhutan finding out different things this is a real raw insight that you wouldn't see that much because this isn't a main tourist site is it no this is just everyday life yeah. and that's beautiful Bhutan creates power from the uh, from the rivers through hydroelectricity because you can see there's so much power in there. interesting and cheering you might be able to help us with this what, what is this like spinning thing right so there's a prayer it's written mantras on it wow see if you can stop yeah it's done naturally by the wind wow that's very we have almost like there are three different types yeah one uh, it's uh, done by the man manually uh -huh. and uh, we have one uh, kind which is turned the water 
by naturally. Wow. And this one is like a, it should be lighter one, so where it will be turned by the wind only. Wow. Naturally. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's go inside this uh, temple here. The uh, the temple is in like this little tiny village, and uh, I think that this is a real local temple. It doesn't mm. really get visited by tourists that often. Oh, okay. Cool. We walk over the fence. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> These are the arms that were welded in the 15th and 16th century by the uh, people here who were building the temple. So you can see it's still in really, really good shape. It's uh, well, very fascinating to see that. And this this whole building was built in the uh, 14th, 14th century, century, right? Yeah. By a reincarnation of no, uh, the, the Shama Rinpoche. Oh, Shama, Shama Rinpoche. Rinpoche. But then present reincarnation, no, yeah. I've seen it, so I'm not sure where ah, he's okay. stationed. Okay. And it's like situated in this little village here. So the local people would come here every day? Uh, not really every day, but then usually like on, uh, uh, I'll say the occasionally. Usually okay. you know like uh, uh, we have some of the days we, which we consider auspicious. In a month we have like five days which are auspicious and usually on those days people visit the temples and monasteries. Mm. Turing was just saying that, I believe it's in November, it depends on the new, new uh, lunar year, but they have this festival where people run through fire. Mm. They jump through fire, it's like a blessing. Right. Have you ever heard of that before? Maybe seen it in a movies. Yeah. In movies, in but movies. not in real life. Yet. That doesn't happen in Nepal, right? Run through the fire. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. I've no. seen it in China before, like on YouTube, but not in Bhutan. I didn't realize that happened. Yeah, but I wonder how does that work? Like running through the fire. Yeah, wouldn't you get things? burnt? <laughs> I guess not. Well, Maybe not. That would be really cool if we ever come back in November. Uh, that'd be cool to come back yeah, here and, right. and visit. Yeah. yeah, wow. Super interesting. Man. <laughs> Only in Bhutan. Okay, so we just arrived to the temple that we're going to hike up to. There, it's actually a half an hour hike. Is it? Yeah. This looks so near. I know, like, right? Like maybe 15 minutes. I think it's because it's so steep. Yeah. So we're going up there to visit a monk. And he's going to give us information about this valley, about the temple. Yeah, yeah. so it should be good. Let's go. because the door is locked but uh, inside there you can see the mill is rotating that is from just from the power of the water and it's crushing is it caught maize i think wheat wheat Not okay wheat, well, we can see clearly ah uh, yeah wheat or maize it's crushing just from the power of the water which is super cool to see being powered by nature you know so sophia is again talking to the butterfly okay so we're just starting our hike now hi ho Hi ho. 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 It's off to the monk we see. Wow. To get some wisdom of the valley, I hope. Hi ho. <laughs> you do your hi ho song. I don't know. Try one? Oh gosh, careful, no, darling. No, I'm just posing for the camera. Oh, <laughs> yeah. little prankster. <laughs> You've scared me. <laughs> My brand new limited edition luggage from Level 8 Cases. Feast your eyes on this vibrant beauty. The yellow 30-inch check-in. Now you might be thinking, Jack, isn't this just a regular suitcase? What's all the fuss about? Well, let me tell you, this isn't no ordinary suitcase. This revolutionary piece boasts a wide body and a strong handle design, while also looking extremely stylish as you travel around, allowing you to pack more into your suitcase than what you ever could. On my last trip, I even managed to fit Sophia inside, 
so I wouldn't have to pay for a plane ticket. <laughs> but it's not all about the looks and space. This polycarbonate shell is virtually indestructible and scratch proof. And my favorite feature, the silky smooth 360 spinner wheels that glide as if they're floating on air. Level 8 offers a vast range of suitcases. So use my code JACKTOR for 10% off at checkout. Click the link in my description to get your Level 8 case today. Once your suitcase arrives, tag me on Instagram and I'll be sure to get back to you. So one thing I actually love about this little walk is, as you can see next to us, these are different trees than pine trees. Most of Bhutan when you're driving around, you just see pine mm. and you sort of get a little bit, not sick of it, but like it does become really common. So when you do see other trees, it's When I imagine Bhutan, nice. like in my mind, like I see pine trees everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a pine tree country. Right. <laughs> but it's nice to see these new trees, right? Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, just like simple. Alive. Mm hmm Okay. And God's handprint. That's three words. How? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alive, miracle. Yeah. You have to say two words. Oh. Calm and free. Mm. Yeah. So we're just reaching the temple now where we're going to see the monk. And I didn't realize that we were having lunch here today. So that's going to be really special to be able to eat with him and ask questions about the valley and the history of this place. Uh, so it should be really interesting. Sir Karma from Mercury Bhutan Travels actually set this up. So uh, yeah, if you're thinking about coming to Bhutan and want a guide and looking for an agency that's really good, we're using them and we really recommend them. So link in the description. Hello. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. Yum, what am I doing? And the food dress, but never send the food dress or the lunch. It's special that we're having a lunch in the temple. Yeah. This doesn't normally happen. Thank you for inviting us here today and uh, eating and coming into your temple. Uh, your temple is very, very lovely. So, uh, how long ago was the temple built here? In the 19th century. Okay, well, him and his family have been managing this since he was born or when did he come? Mm, it's from before itself when the temple started. Their family had been taking care of this temple. Wow, that's great. So it's because of his ancestors yes. have been. So what's one of the best things that he likes about his work? He likes about being a monk. Mm. So he has like uh, been doing like praying, mm -hmm. then like uh, making the offerings in the altar and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, away from that, uh, maintaining of the cleanliness of mm -hmm. the area, mm -hmm. is that's like its best part. Away from his uh, like uh, religious practices that you have. Uh -huh. So uh, now I have a bit of a deeper question and I want to try and gain an understanding. So uh, for example, in uh, Christianity or even in Islam, <coughs> right, uh, people practice the religion but then they go out into their normal world, they do some work and they interact with many people and they go to this shop or do some farming or whatever and their teachings they project outwards onto society. So I try to understand 
if someone is a monk and they're doing all the meditation their whole life and they're living here without being disrespectful but what i'm trying to understand what is the point of doing that like mm. because as far as i understand there's not an afterlife so like in buddhism so like from what other people have told me so like like why i guess you mean afterlife yeah like i've talk to some monks before they say that there's no afterlife no we have afterlife you do have afterlife Buddhism, we do have okay everyone believes that that there is afterlife is it okay so i think maybe okay. like i'm not sure okay who was the monk ah uh, cuz the, the monk i was talking to he said like that it was yeah. just like gaining um nirvana nirvana and not so much about the spiritual aspect and that was at its core but like it's hard to it's wrong, yeah it's hard like, to explain like <laughs> yeah the ma- main reason for doing the meditation and all is so you cannot control your mind mm. you cannot keep your mind always with you it's something like taming your mind if when you are doing the meditation you can control your mind so that the mind doesn't uh, disturbs you after that and uh, the, for the after life so we as a buddhist i would say that the, so we always believe that we have like next life the after life is reincarnation reincarnation uh. is something like when the like a uh, higher masters or lamas uh. when they are reborn so uh. it's something like in- reincarnation uh, okay. but for the normal people yeah. and all so yeah. the term we call it the we use always use the reborn it, like people say that buddha isn't god right so when the monks are doing the meditation it's like i've had a monk tell me before that they're not praying to buddha is he praying to buddha or is he meditating within to reach trying to reach nirvana like i'm trying trying to understand cuz every people i ask it's a different answer by praying in the buddha so it doesn't mean that we will gain the enlightenment yeah. we have to practice ourselves whatever we have like the stages and all yeah. it is just to show to the people that there has been buddha and this are the something like the works that were done by the buddha that's great so finally mm-hmm. we just want to yeah. say thank you for answering these questions yeah. we know that there are the questions might be a bit intense or a bit yeah. uh hard we don't uh mean to do that but i think a lot of people out there uh may be wondering these questions mm. so that's why we asked oh, them today great, yeah. yeah it's so okay. oh, ah, no worries okay <laughs> well thank you very much thank you oh, oh my gosh look at this view so this is just off where we were just in the little uh temple there so yeah this, that was uh, a really really good interview uh-huh. uh i just wanted to ask you know the in-depth questions that i think you guys would be wondering as well uh about marriage about yeah. afterlife about all these things in buddhism that sometimes you don't get the clearest answers mm-hmm. on so uh i hope you like that because also i'm sure that you'd agree darling bhutan is a very buddhist country so not only with the culture but it's the the buddhism religion if you would say mm-hmm. is very in, integrated here so i think it'd be interesting for the viewers true, yeah. to watch that but yeah anyway <laughs> look at this beautiful view look at beautiful sakya <laughs> she's looking so nice today Thank darling you. you look really lovely this is my mom's cholo oh is it yeah. so this is from nepal this is from nepal okay. this is from bhutan awesome half yeah. half yes so we're just going to go up the stairs here It's just cool because it's like carved in the side of the mountain. Have a look. Here. So we are wearing socks, right? Yeah. So it's, just let's be extra careful. It's slippery, yeah. So this is the uh this is the exit to the temple. Really, really amazing and you can see here the uh, Guru Rinpoche. in the uh, in the cave here wow such a cool place just built on the side of a <coughs> cliff and this is up where we just were amazing right mm. the architecture is so cool yeah i love i love how the wood sounds when we walk like, yeah like creaking like ASMR. yeah <laughs> <laughs> crazy right mm. wow Gosh. I never thought we'd be climbing the side of a cliff to go up to a temple to speak to a monk and, and ask have, have lunch and have lunch inside the temple and ask him about Buddhism. Yeah, I didn't think I'd wake up and do that this morning. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. The view. Oh, 
So he was, he was just telling us that he sees uh, leopards and uh, bears all the time here. And then sometimes even with the bears, it's very, very dangerous. So that's crazy. And up here, it snows in the winter. So uh, yeah, it's it's very different climate living up here. And it's very remote, like it's only a few people that, that live in this area. So wow, <laughs> it's awesome. Hello. No? <laughs> What's your name? My name is Wow, nice name. <laughs> so yeah, right now we're just in the town here and we're going to look at some little local shops and see, uh, yeah, everyday life here. But uh, we're just in front of the mask place where they sell these masks and uh, different arts and crafts. Wow, so they have the uh, masks and this is uh, what they were wearing in our last vlog. Uh, on their face, so super interesting. And they have uh, all of the different artworks here too, which is, uh, these artworks are quite famous here in, uh, in Bhutan. You can buy, buy these when you come here and uh, they're quite interesting. This one here has a, uh, I, I believe it's a mantra written on it and uh, different photos of Buddha as well. It's only 150 for a haircut. Yeah, That's a pretty good it? price, right? Yeah, so they have everything down here. They, you can see here that they sell the cheese as well that we saw before, the dried out cheese. Mm. It's very interesting. Yeah, this is what a little town looks like here in Bhutan. They have a phallus, a penis on the outside of their door to protect from the evil spirits. Hello. Hello. You want to go talk to the kids? Some kids are waving at us. Let's go say hello. Zuzampala. What are you doing? How are you? Are you good? Hi. What's your name? What's your What's your name? <laughs> Cute kids. Wow. Auto industry. So they sell car parts in here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, let's jump, jump, tap, jump, jump. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's that? What's that? <laughs> so yeah, you can tell that these towns here are fairly laid back and uh, nice little towns and they have everything that people need, you know, a general shop. Uh, let's go in here into this general shop and, and see what they have. All different types of things. You can get pretty much anything in this little village here. Even hair clips mm. as well. And we've got the man here manning the money and the front desk. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That's how it works in Bhutan. They put eight-year-olds on, uh, on the checkout desk. But yeah, really cool. So uh, they've got all the different clothes and everything as well. Our day here in Bhutan, in Buntang. Has been amazing. It's been so Every amazing. Day. Every day. New and um, yeah. yeah, we hope that you like this local sort of experience and sharing some different things. Uh, I really loved it. Also sitting down with the monk was nice, learning some different things mm. about Bhutan and about uh, Buddhism. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep, keep it real. real. Cheers. Cheers.